everybody, and I'm excited for today <laughs> because today is the day that we were able to get our founders and global presidents to come on to a webcast. And the reason we wanted to do this was just for you to meet how fantastic the founders of Zenzino really are. I know when people meet them, they say, I just, I want to spend more time with them. And I have the same feeling about that. <laughs> so thank you for coming on. Welcome to Orion and Hilda Sailor. Thank you so much, Carla. <laughs> Thank you. As you guys are in Norway and finding time to, out of the, the busy schedule that you have, uh, people probably don't know you're building a fantastic business in Zenzino and also being a family. <laughs> Little <game. laughs> Absolutely. Yes. It's sometimes it's tough. We know how it is to balance family life and everything with, with business life, but you get it to work, you know, if you're focused and, and passionate about what you do. And we certainly are. <laughs> and, and, and truthfully, that's one of the things that uh, I love about our profession in general is that you actually have the potential of balancing those two things out because with a kind of visions and the kind of perspective we have for where Sincino is going to grow through. Uh, if we were just in the regular corporate race, uh, it would be difficult to deliver my kid in kindergarten at 9.15 many mornings and pick him up at 3. Of course, we work some in the evening and stuff like that too, but we can actually fit life into our schedule, which I think is a great benefit. You know, and, and, and now that we know more of the profession, you know, uh, been in the business for six years here, I, we would love to hear, how did you guys get started in the direct selling industry and how and why Zenzino? How did that come about? <laughs> well, I got started when I was 20 years of age, which is now almost, <laughs> almost 17 years ago. Uh, and I was uh, at that time uh, a law student. And I think I got like one of those introductions that many of you guys, uh, uh, guys and gals also have gotten, you know, you, you got a phone call and then you got invited to a meeting. And, and I saw that this was something that uh, could help me actually get some fine, better finances. And I've always been ambitious and always been hungry, but really as a start, you know, what I, what I started out having a focus on was that I wanted to earn some extra income. And uh, so like, again, many have experiences that um, you get started and maybe the, what you get, the, when you get started, it doesn't necessarily go exactly how you plan. But actually my first month, I had 70 meetings and I ended up having uh, 63 people saying no to me. Seven said yes. But then the month after, actually, four returned the package. <laughs> so I ended up with three. But I continued working with that. And uh, after a year, I had built quite a large team um, on my one side, I would say. So I was a really nice binary chicken. Uh, by the second year, it was starting to do a little bit better. And uh, what happened was that I really fell in love with the profession. I fell in love with the people, uh, most of all. And I decided actually at that time to put uh, law school on hold and focus full time on my direct selling uh, business. So um, I got started with that. Uh, I couldn't live off the money um, there and then. So I had a sales job uh, on the side, but after year three, things were still, was actually starting to run really nicely. And, and after that, you know, it's been my full time focus and career. And here is the thing, Hilda thinks that she had a bad start <laughs> while she <laughs> outperformed me so much. I think it was about four years before I really had three people. I may be a little bit more after four years, but I got in at 17. Uh, actually, it was my uncle that brought me into the business and we had no idea what this was. There was no training. There was really nothing, but it still was cheaper than starting my own businesses, which I'd already tried and failed on. And I would continue to try and fail on that a few more times during my first four years of career. And four years into the business, I'd made the equivalent of $300. I'd been working part-time and towards full-time for quite a while. 
and uh, I was still, of course, a student part time on the side. Uh, but that's when my break kind of came in the business where I made a breakthrough in my fifth year and uh, was able to go full time and and build a business that could also provide some income. So uh, a slow start. Uh, I've found that very often can be a good start if you survive. The reason why many people talk about you gotta avoid a slow start, you gotta have a fast start, you gotta create results quickly, uh, is because too many don't survive a slow start like the one I had and maybe even like the one uh, Hilda had is sometimes hard to survive. Uh, the four returns in the second month after signing up uh, seven. It's, it's kind of hard to handle that. And, and for me, that was most definitely one of the biggest challenges for me was before I had my breakthrough was to be able to believe that I could actually do it. Uh, but then, of course, today I've been in for, uh, I can't count that far, while well, it's been 24 years. And... Uh, and after that, you've seen many people make their breakthroughs. And today, it's easy to believe that, uh, that people can do that. So I would say that uh, uh, the way you start doesn't necessarily reflect the way you will finish. And that's one of the things that I try to focus on with people that we work with is that it's not about what you did yesterday. It's not about what happened a year ago. It's not about what happened last time you were in a company. It's not what happened at your job. It's not what happened at your school. It's what's happening today and tomorrow and for the continuation of your life. That's what determines which kind of results you'll end up getting in the long term. That should be the focus. And that's definitely a big thing in Cincino. It's not how we started that will make us great. It's how we finish. And I would also like to add to that because so many people are so afraid of failing. And that's really one of the things that I believe is so important is that when you start, fail faster, have more action because that's also when you in the end actually become a lot better. There's been a quote uh, that has been posted all over Twitter lately saying that speed is four billion times more important than perfection. And I do actually agree on that because your tempo, how fast you actually get something in motion, how the more you do in the start, the more you learn. And I definitely believe that's been one of our major keys uh, to get to where we are today. So what you also asked us about, about Carla was that how Zeno got started. <laughs> because you ever had that start, both of you, it didn't sound like this, you know, fantastic winning start and yet you plugged through and kept going and then somehow Zenzino came about. You guys founding it. And I, I think Zenzino was just as slow as us in the start. <laughs> Well, like many of you know, we started out with the coffee and it, it was actually after Orion was on a business trip in Germany uh, and he got over or found this product and he came home to me and he said, you know, I have this amazing product. It's Pods Coffee. Do you know what it is? And I had literally no idea or actually he started out calling me about it and I thought he was just absolutely crazy <laughs> because I really didn't see how we could work with that. Uh, but then I tasted the coffee myself and we got started with it. Uh, and then uh, we continued on building, building from that as the start. And like Orion said, you know, it wasn't really a big hit in, this, in the beginning. We bought in, I think, 16,000 machines and we sold uh, less than 1,000 the first year. So we had no clue what we were doing. Uh, and it wasn't really moving fast. But step by step, we started to learn the process. And after that, you know, uh, we built the system, we built the foundation, and things were actually starting to do well. And then in 2012, as you uh, all probably know, we found the product that we are uh, currently leading with today, our balanced concept that I are, believe are changing thousands of people's life and hopefully in the future will uh, benefit millions and millions of people. So, so let me just uh, pick up that again, because now it sounds like both of us are complete failures here <laughs> in, in life. And, uh, and that we had no idea what we were doing when we started Cincino. And that's simply not true. We had 
great success coming up to leading instance you know, and we had some very clear goals and very clear visions when we started Senseno because we wanted to create something new, something that hadn't been done before. And when you want to go into a territory that is unknown, uh, that often means that it's not popular either, which means that you got to be the groundbreaker, the front breaker of something to make something happen. And there is often a kind of an opposition towards the new thing. And that's, of course, where we came in with a product that nobody knew about. Nobody had a, a single serve espresso unit on their kitchen table in 2005. Most people had never seen one before. Most people it didn't even believe that they were ever going to have one like that in the future. And the second thing that most people didn't associate direct selling with was a direct to consumer program where you would sell subscriptions, where you would uh, pick up customers and you wouldn't only have a recruiting frenzy, which uh, I think today is getting outlawed even in many countries, where we were like 10 years ahead of everyone else implementing this into our system very carefully so that we had a business that would thrive in the future. So we could afford to start with something that was unique, something that had a solid foundation, and we could afford to build it step by step uh, when we started in the beginning. And yes, we didn't grow like people hear about the momentum that comes right away. No, we didn't have that kind of momentum, but we had a very steady, very planned growth. Actually, our goal was to be growing somewhere between 30 and 70% a year. And we never missed on the downside for the first 10 years. And we only missed on the upside one year where we had 76% growth in the first 10 years. So we just stayed according to our plan, growing a very solid foundation with a focus on the four Scandinavian markets with Norway, Sweden, fin uh, Norway, Sweden, Denmark as the three first one, then adding Finland, then adding Iceland, then adding the Baltics, and eventually in 2014, adding in the US and some of the European countries. And today, uh, we are well over $50 million a year in sales, and we've added uh, over 34 countries to our marketplace, and we're going to continue to expand that for the next 10 years. And yes, again, we maybe won't be the fastest growing company every year, but our goal will again be to be somewhere above 30%, up to 70%. And yes, if it took a year of 100, 200% growth, that'd be okay today because we could sustain that as company. But if you compound like that, another 10 years, we're going to see millions of customers. And eventually, if you compound another 10 years after that, you're going to be simply one of the largest companies out there. And that's what we intend to do with Sincena. So I just want to add to that also, because, you know, one of our key focuses has been since we got started with Zenzino to build things by design. You know, there is it's so easy uh, to just build it the way it happens along the way. Uh, and uh, like Orion said, you know, we were really, really focused on having a clear customer uh, model. And that was one of the major things that we saw that for direct sales to actually be uh, a profession where people can be very, very proud about what they're doing, you know, we have to do some changes. So for instance, in, in uh, 2007, I think it was, we uh, set a focus for ourselves and also for our leaders that everyone should have a minimum of 25 subscription customers. And that has really duplicated into uh, the community now. And we see people having both 25, 50, 100, even 200 and more personal customers that are buying products every single month. And we are really, really proud of that because we believe that the companies that will lead in in the future will be the people will be the company that actually has leaders that practice what they say and actually do the work with getting customers I love that I, I actually you know when you're talking about the growth and and I think sometimes it's that Scandinavian calmness because I'm sitting here going wow listen to this growth and the and the customer base is what's amazing because of all the stories that you hear too uh, even from my own personal family, the changes that it's done in people. But this business, 
uh, there's a lot of businesses out there. No, the more I'm studying, the more I'm talking to people, there's a lot of them. But Zenzino is very different. I think the customer base is probably, uh, probably the biggest difference, wouldn't you say? Well, I, I think that's the biggest visual uh, difference. Uh, I think also in the way we, we develop our products, there is some uniqueness to that. We, we don't necessarily have the products that is the fastest one to convince somebody about using. Uh, in fact, our best selling product is a four month conviction or, or four month program to get people convinced that they need this for the rest of their life which is quite unique. And of course, we do have a blood test to begin with to convince people that they need it. Uh, and then there is a follow-up after four months. And yeah, some of them get results already after four, five, six days, but we want to have something that is based on a change that is real, not a change that is just felt. And yes, I, I felt change is real too, but it's much more real when you match up what you feel to what happens in your blood work, because then it's sustainable. Mm -hmm. So yes, it maybe takes you a bit longer to get somebody excited about starting to use the pro product because you want to go a little bit deeper into details. But then at the end of four months, if they did a follow up and they saw their blood works again, uh, they'd actually be very excited and very confident about recommending it to friends and families for the future. So, so the products is, is unique, but then we also have our culture, which was also by design. We wanted to create a place which was a home for people that are doing direct selling uh, so that this would be a company that was driven by the field uh, with an understanding of the people that are, are in the field, that people are, that are in the field would actually have an influence at corporate so that it wouldn't all of a sudden be changing around things that wasn't good for us and stuff like that, which I know have been a dynamic to the direct selling industry in the past. And, and I think that culture is influencing the decisions and also making it when we come on trips and stuff like that, that, that it's, it's just a very friendly, very uplifting, very encouraging, energetic community that people get taken part of. I think they call that the Zenzino family. So many yes. people calling it the Zenzino family with the right values intact. I think that's a huge difference for people. You know, if there's a lot of people going to be starting in Zenzino, um, what would you say to them when they're getting started? Because to me, the system is, is also different from a lot of things. We have a very specific system of, of building Zenzino. Absolutely. And I think that the major thing is actually in what I said uh, a little earlier on, get started <laughs> because there's, it's so many people that are waiting for the right moment or to know it all before they get started. But I do believe that the key is to actually get started right away and build it from there, build it from the experience. Now, obviously we have a lot of material and like you say, Carla, we are very system driven. Uh, so follow, uh, follow the teaching that you get through your uh, upline and through the different material. But the main thing is to actually get those first meetings booked and get in, uh, in the meetings and, and learn by experience because the faster you, or the more meetings you have in the very start, the faster you learn, the better you become. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and one of the things when you have a system-driven business is that it's not going to be so easy to build it unless you actually follow the system. Uh, if you have a business that doesn't have a clear system, you go out and it's built up in a way where you could get results without learning the products, without learning the method of selling, without knowing anything. And you just share and you are enthusiastic and you promote it. And a lot of direct selling is built that way. Sincino is not built that way. We have a systematic presentation that if you follow the presentation to a customer, you will in the beginning be closing at least one out of three on six month committed contracts. And when you get good at it, you will be closing one out of two, meaning a 60, 70% hit rate will be normal when you get good at it. And that's much better than the average. But if you go out and you don't learn the systematic approach to it, you'd end up maybe only closing a very few people and it would be very hard because everything becomes complicated when you don't follow our system because then you don't do it in the right order, 
orders and you end up uh, in the end of you sharing enthusiastic about this oil that is potentially changing your life and all of those things and then you got to get a test and then it's 149 for the first month and then free shipping is included in the second month but it's 39 a month and then you get a free test in month four and the customer by the end of that presentation will be completely confused and wondering why can't I just get the oil for 39 a month and not having to worry about anything and there will be confusion and confusion doesn't lead to a duplicatable process. And the thing is that uh, we are a direct selling company and that's why we have a method for how we sell each one of our products. So when you follow that method, there is no confusion, it's very duplicatable. It takes a little bit longer time to learn, but it becomes a skill, uh, which is a profession-based thing when you actually learn it and you can duplicate it throughout your organization and then have a large force of people selling it together with you. And that's how you could build something sustainable, not something that is just based on a good feeling. And I also like that, or think that it's important to understand that success is really in the duplication. And if you're really, really skilled yourself, you can, you can obviously, you can sign up two customers or two partners a week. You can duplicate it or do it yourself, sign up four and eight and 16. And if you have lots of, and lots of meetings, you can probably also sign up 32 in a week, but you can't really necessarily duplicate that if you don't have a system. But if you have a system where every single one on your team are following the same method of operation suddenly you can go from 32 to 64 to 128 to 256 to 512 1024 and, and so on you know because people are following one method of operation and there is no confusion about how to get things done I think actually a couple both of you have said something about the enthusiasm and doing things you know, some of the things we've said is uh, have fun, earn money, and make a difference. I think something that I really realized with you guys, even in what you're saying of your your mantra of your marriage and things like that, you guys are always having fun. And I think that's part of it. Don't you think that? <laughs> I don't know. I just think that seems like it's part of your guys' everyday life. We like we love what we do. We love to work with people. We love to inspire change in life, and uh, you know we're we're just feeling so blessed to have this opportunity to to share this journey together with so many amazing leaders like yourself, Carla, and your team, and every single one that are a part of the Sensino family. Orion's having fun. He was just you see him on stage, and he's just bouncing away. <laughs> Well, well it, it, it's also because we do have something that can work for everyone that is willing to learn how to work it. And, and I think that that's, that's a key here. So there will be fun days, and there will be rainy days, <laughs> and there will be days that we don't want to talk about. Hmm. Uh, that, that, that's for everything. Uh, and of course, having enthusiasm, having energy, encouragement, that, that's a part of driving a business faster. But what I want to point out when we talk about having fun, uh, one of the things that I think is great is to learn to have fun. Uh, so that fun isn't only something that comes from, ah, today I feel like having fun. But learning to have fun is learning to see the joy in the activities that you're doing mm -hmm. so that you have fun with what you're doing at that time. So in the beginning, have fun learning. Don't worry so much about your results. Worry about your learning curve. Because if your learning curve is slow, results will be slow. But if your learning curve is fast, results will follow quickly. So have fun learning. And then when you come to the mid stages, maybe you've gotten fast silver, maybe you've gotten to gold, you've gotten to A team, then have fun looking at the progress. Because in the mid stages, you're not going to make an enormous amount of money from a business that have a turnover of $3,000 a month. It's just never going to happen. It doesn't matter which commission plan we have. If you have $3,000 in turnover a month, you're not going to make an enormous amount of money. The good part is that you don't have a shop, so you're not paying $3,000 a month in rent, and you don't have inventory. So you're at least not losing a lot of money. But when you have a business that have a small turnover, 
don't get so focused on a commission check. I think the commission check is important because we should always um, look towards the numbers, but what's more important is the progress. Do I bring my business from $3,000 a month to $4,000 a month this month? That's what you count. That's what you celebrate. That's the fun experience. So focus on the progress. And that's then eventually when you start hitting diamond, you start hitting director, well, that's coming into the leadership part, and that's when you will be looking at the profit part of the business. So now it's important that you profit so that you eventually could have the time to retire from your normal job at some point. We don't necessarily recommend doing that unless you want to, but when you want to and you have a career in Cincinnati that could sustain that, then it needs to be profitable. So then fun is connected to making the profit. So in the beginning, fun is connected to the learning, the learning curve. How fast can you learn? Then it's how fast can you progress the number, not about how much you learn anymore, not about how much you make, but how fast can you progress the number, the growth of new leadership in your team. And then eventually in the end, it's the profit. So the key is never underestimate the small things that you do every single day, because that's really, you know, what will eventually create your huge result. And I think that's one of the, uh, one of the traps that it's easy to fall into when you get started is that you get so stressed about having these amazing results as fast as possible, instead of actually focusing on one more step, one more step, one more step. It's like one of the things that we sometimes educate is that if you grow six and a half percent from one month to the next month that seems very insignificant in itself especially when you had four customers or ten customers and you grew six and a half percent you know but the key is that uh, over time that would mean that you double your business in one year then you double again then you can double again then you can double again so it's amazing how small things over time can actually lead to an incredible Result, And as you do that, to do that in a busy schedule, I think that to become as effective as you can be every single day is to follow a list, make some priorities every single day. Uh, what's the number one thing that you can get done today to move your business ahead? What's the number two things you can do uh, today to get your business ahead? And personally, I do believe that uh, one of the big keys for me, is, and, or and Orion is smiling here, is that I always have my six points of different things I'm going to get done by the end of today. And by doing that, I get a sense of focus to always get the most important things done every day. And I know that it's sometimes like we got started with talking about com combining family with business and getting all the different things in place. Sometimes that can be a hassle. But if you have a clear focus every single day and get those small things in order, it's incredible what you can achieve long term. And everybody can achieve success in Zincino. Uh, and I think, you know, just by looking at you guys, listening to you guys, I think that's what makes the belief for me of knowing that we're following you uh, who are, have huge visions for the future. And just to finish off, because our time is done, uh, the future of Zincino. What do you see for that in the upcoming years? <laughs> Well, let, let me just pick up on one thing before we go there, because I, I think when we say a statement that everyone can achieve success in Cincino, mm -hmm. I like that statement and I truly believe in that, but I also want to define what success is. Like success in my eyes is if Hilda was mentioning the six things you put on your list in a, in a day. And let's say that you're building Cincino and you have very busy life and all of a sudden you feel that uh, your relationship with your kids isn't exactly the way you want it. Or that could happen long before you joined Cincino too, by the way. But then learning to have six most important things for your business and understanding that sometimes it's putting your kid's name on the top of the list. That's the most important thing that I do today. That's success because then you've understood life and not only the business. And that's when you can really teach and help a lot of people there. Another thing that might come up on the top of the list is to kiss your wife that day for a long time. And you, you might take this as a joke, but I truly believe 
that if you are strong, if you are uh, empowered, if you are enthusiastic, if you are en energetic, if you have your life together and your life becomes really attractive, people tend to want to have that. People tend to want to follow that, which means that that is success in itself. And then it's a time factor and a sales volume factor on how much profit you make at it in the end. And that profit is determined by each one of us. How much profit do I need to have success on top of living a successful life? Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. So where I, I love the values of Zenzino. So the future, what are we looking forward to or what, what vision? Cause you guys have talked about this for all the time and you guys are hitting all the, many of the goals that we're setting, we're hitting them. And I know that we're working on it and you guys have all these plans and, and your visions are amazing. So we have a major target and that is to hit 1 million customer uh, by 2020. Yes. And, uh, you know, it's, it's so exciting to see the growth at the moment. And obviously, it's very, very ambitious goals. We have to grow from approximately 115,000 customers, active customers today, uh, to 1 million by 20, end of 2020. But it's really something that we believe we can do. And that also obviously gives you that are watching an incredible opportunity in itself because we're going to do as much now in the next upcoming years as we've done uh, during you know since we got started by it's 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 got to be incredible you know how big of a growth we're gonna have and and we also have quite amazing visions for 2035 we're aiming for 20 million customers so we're not stopping at 1 million I don't know if you want to add to that Orion <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I think that uh, we, we've gotten some products that I think should be consumed by over a billion people already. And we have 115,000. So saying that we should get this out to a million by 2020 is actually a small goal. But it, and, and it's much more possible today than when we set it over 10 years ago, because 10 years ago when we set it, we were in a 20 to 30 million people market. Today we are in a billion people market. So we expect the same thing to happen in each of the new countries that we go into, as have happened in Norway, in Sweden, in Denmark, in Finland, in Iceland and so on. I can mention the rest of the countries as well. And that is that we will grow to be a top one, two or three company in each country we go into inside of our profession. And if we just added that number together for 34 markets that we're in currently, that would be way over a million customers. So, so if we just hit top three in the US, that would be over a million customers. So meaning that, but we think that we can do this by 2020. If it takes a year extra, well, we're not going to slow down in 2020. It's when we speed up and our aim for 2035 is strong. And then after that, we're going to continue. So yes, you are on board with a company that is planning to be the company that will dominate in the future. And we're planning to do it in a very effective, in a very sound, and in a very good way where nobody is really left behind as well. We want to do it with a culture so that when we are millions of people, people will still feel the family feeling of the company. And I think that's very important to us as well. So I don't know if there was anything else than this you wanted, Carla, but, but the big picture, if I just throw in one more thing, the big picture is that we will do it and we will help everyone that comes in with us to do the same thing. And we have something that is impacting every person that comes into our company as a partner and every person that comes into our company as a customer. We're impacting their lives in many ways. And that's a good thing to be a part of. So when you build a business, because Many people just want to say, okay, I want to build a business. I want to make some money. I want to get out of my uh, job situation or I want to add to my finances. But the big picture at the end of everything is as you do that and you look back, will you be proud of the way you did it? 
uh, of the products you did it with, of the people you're doing it together with. That's the big picture, is to do it in a manner where you leave a legacy of hope, a legacy of, uh, I, I'm saying goodness, I don't know if that's a correct term, but a legacy of, of I, I'd say love is probably better, after you, after you've done it. Uh, because then you would recommend everyone else to do it to you. And that's how you continue to grow for the future again. Mm, absolutely love it. You guys have taken time out of your busy schedule uh, or take time away from that kiss that Maureen talked about. <laughs> and thank you so much for being on here. We, we are so honored and blessed to be a part of Zenzino and uh, look forward to the future with both of you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you, Carla. Thank you.